Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from GreyFlorals.com and today I have another episode of Card Making for Scrapbookers with Sarah Scraps and I. And today we are featuring tags. So I actually decided to use a bunch of the pre-made card bases I have in my stash and make five cards for you today featuring tags. Now I will say none of these are like super inventive ideas. I have seen a lot of these before on Pinterest and you know all the beautiful card makers there are but I did try to keep them simple enough so that you can do them with scrapbooking supplies you already own in your stash not a ton of stamping not a ton of anything going on other than layering different items together to create a cohesive look so I have two craft card bases one yellow card base one green card base and one white obviously a lot more people use white card bases than the other ones but I figured it'd be nice to have some color options in here in case you have colored cardstock in your stash that you'd like to use up but sort of struggle with those different color waves. So I went through all of my tags in my stash and pulled out these as my base designs and I figured I don't have a full design yet for any of these but starting off with this I think we could figure out something to make. So with this first tag which was actually a gift to me from someone um, I'm going to do this washi tape background to pull in more of those colors because on the tag there's a ton of different colors because it's got this grid rainbow pattern and I thought that might be fun to do some sort of bold background with some washi tape strips a great way to use up some washi tape as well and there is yellow on the tag as well so like the reinforcement hole is yellow and then there's also yellow stripes in the grid pattern so that's why I chose the yellow card base for this tag and this is a great way to use items that you don't think would be easily to use on normal scrapbook pages or any projects. So like this sort of tag, which is multicolored, would be very hard for me to use on a page versus on a card where it's a smaller canvas and I decide the color palette. This works a lot better for my personal design taste. And then I managed to find this beautiful die cut from Jelly Bean Soup in my random die cut pile. Um, and I use that as my embellishment you know sort of sentiment on this page and I'm just going to use some foam adhesive on that to give it a little bit more of a boost and this sort of blue shade that the word smile is in does match pretty well with the color blues that are in the tag so I thought that was a perfect you know match and I'm just cutting the foam to size to make sure that it fits well in those little spaces on the back there this is one of the hardest parts I think of doing card making is trying to get things to work um, multi-dimensionally but without going too thick because you want to make sure it survives the mail. Here I have another craft cardstock piece that I'm using as a base and this is 110 pound cardstock. All the cardstocks I have are and I believe they're all from either Joann's or Michael's. I don't have any specialty cardstock brands in my stash. But here I have sort of an elegant color card scheme. Color card scheme, I guess that works, more like card color scheme, uh, but I decide to go with a simple background here which is an embossed white paper and it's got sort of like a Moroccan tile theme and that will be the background, the main background for these tags to sit on. And you can also tell that the black tag there does have an ampersand on it but I just intentionally cover that up with the other tag so I don't have to worry about it. And then also from another Jelly Bean Soup collection I find this word that says joy which is in a dark gray and that works perfectly for this card. Now I could picture this card for um, you know, all sorts of things. It could be a wedding, it could be a congratulations for a graduation, um, even a birthday. I also pull out these Vicki Booten die cuts. This circle that I did pull out says why hello there a bunch of times around and around and I thought that worked really really well with this design because of the black and white I'm kind of going for. And once that is all glued down, that is almost it for this card. I decide to add a little bit more. I find that with cards like this, when you don't put anything on foam or you don't have a lot of texture, um, even though I do have the embossed background, it did need a little bit something else. So I sift through my collection of sequins and pull out the 50 sock cop, which has the perfect black and then an also a nice like pearlescent silvery white. Um, and I use those on this to sort of balance out all those elements. Now I do plan on going back in and adding a string onto the top or the black tag there. I want the same exact string that's in the other one and I did not do that on camera this time but um, I did go back and add that after the video was finished. So here I have two tags. One is a gold polka dot and then the other one is reversible because I used a die for some paper a while back. And I end up going with the mint green stripe side here. Now this one I struggled with. These two patterns are very, very competitive. 
um, because they both technically have white bases. So when I was working on this one, I wanted to make sure that I got something that would let them pop, but also, you know, still flow together. So you can see me sifting through my die cuts and my embellishments, and I eventually make it to my, like, alternative embellishment section, where I keep, like, vellum and puffy stickers and all those other little bits. And I pull out these two items. This is a vellum floral bouquet from Illustrated Faith, and then a puffy sticker, which is from my friend Dolly when she sent me a gift, um, and I'm not sure what collection that's from. I pull out some rickrack from my stash, which, yes, um, who still owns rickrack? What a throwback. Uh, I do try to knot it, and then I realize, well, I don't really like the look of that. It's also really, really bulky. So I decide to go for staples instead. Now these are not gold staples, they are silver, but that doesn't bother me, especially with cards. Um, I don't think a lot of people pay attention to those minute details, but I staple those both in place. And then of course they're a little bit too long, so I also trim them with my scissors. And then they look a little bit better. And as I'm assembling the card here, um, like I said, I do have a vellum piece. Now normally I'd put my vellum piece through my Xyron, um, but this one's too big so it didn't fit. So what I do instead is use my tape adhesive and put it on the darker elements of the vellum. So this is a printed vellum, so that means the dark pink ones is where I put the adhesive as well as on the little leaves. And that just seems to have hid all the adhesive pretty well. And you'll see all of these in the close-ups at the end as well. Moving on to the next card, and I do apologize these are quick, but I figured you'd rather watch, you know, five cards in ten minutes versus one card in ten minutes. So I went for some cool ideas um, using your different shaped tags and textured tags um, and these quick ideas versus, you know, one drawn out idea. But I hope you guys do enjoy. I know every time I do a card making video, a lot of you want to see me make more card videos. And I do have uh, at least one other one filmed that I want to put up um, in September. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I hope you guys do enjoy that we focused on tags this month. If there is something you want to see us focus on while making cards, please let us know in the comments down below. We would love to have your suggestions to go off of for this series. Um, and again, we do this once a month, the last Wednesday of every month. And if you have not checked out Sarah's beautiful card yet, go check out her channel to go watch her card. Um, she goes into more details, you know, about making the card versus where I'm just sort of putting the cards together, if that makes sense. I had these three um, colored owl images from my stash that I had done earlier um, in August, and I figured why not just use them all on the same exact card. Um, and I really like how this turned out. It's very cute, and I think that the green goes really nice with the owl theme, because um, I know that background green color is kind of hard to work with. Then this last card was actually the hardest one of all for me. Um, I don't know why it took me so long to figure out what I wanted to do or the placement of everything, but this is the only one that I think I end up stamping on, and I pull out this Alta New, I think it's painted sentiment stamp set. Really love this stamp set. I used it, I think, two episodes ago, maybe one episode ago, in the card making for Scrapbooker series, um, but I really, really enjoy it, and it's still sitting out in, like, non-organized stamps studying to put away, so I figured I'd use it again. I pull out the sentiment that says sending hugs, and this sentiment's actually the perfect size to go at the bottom of this dark blue tag. And most of the tags I showed you today are actually just from Michael's or Joann's and those little packs, but for example, those craft brown ones, the small ones that I used on the green card are from Ellie Studio. And of course some of the cards or some of the tags I've actually made myself as well with some dies that I have in my stash. So if you guys have ta tag die cuts, sorry, um, I would highly recommend you try using those on some cards sometime soon. So I decided to put everything on foam adhesive for this card as well, and I really, really like how this one turned out. Again, very simple, works for a multitude of occasions, um, and I'm really glad that this one turned out better than I had hoped, of course, um, but it could always be worse, so... Here I'm going to, this is actually a linen tag, sort of, like a burlap texture. Um, so I had to use a lot of adhesive on that to make sure it's stuck. And to dress this tag up a little bit, I'm going to go in with some cream-colored pearls, and I think they add a lot of, you know, interest to the page without too much bulk. But after this card, that is it. Let's hop into the close-up so you guys can see them all side by side. And I made these all within, like, uh, less than an hour. Um, so if you do have tags, this is a great starting point for your cards. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate when you guys do that. And leave us a comment down below with what you guys want us to focus on in the next Card Maker for Scrapbooker series. 
Don't forget to go check out Sarah's video, which I'll have linked down below. And don't forget to go check out the other videos we've done for this series on our channels. But thank you guys again so much for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!